Welcome to America's Heroes Group. Good afternoon. That was our host, Cliff Kelly. I'm the co-host, Deborah Denhart, U.S. Air Force veteran. Our executive producer is Glenda Smith. Our digital media producer is Ivan Ortega, Scouts Honor Productions. America's Heroes Group's roundtable today is with clean energy infrastructure partner Zodiac Solutions, LLC, and Brevian Energy. Today is Saturday, November 5th, 2022. November is Military Family Appreciation and Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month. Now for our partner today, Rod Matthew. He is a U.S. Navy veteran owner of Brevian Energy, specializing in microgrid technologies and renewable energy. Today we're going to talk about microgrids and clean energy infrastructure and how this can support and be beneficial for veterans. Rod, thank you so much for being a guest today. It is my pleasure. How are you today? I'm doing amazing. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. Great. Uh, we're coming down. Uh, we've been uh, pretty busy uh, coming down to the wire with these elections. So it's, it's, it's been um, all out adventurous. Perfect. That's awesome. Okay, let's start with first, can you explain what a microgrid is? Oh, well, thank you for asking, because that's one of the questions that we get asked a lot, right? A microgrid, uh, in effect, is just a smaller version of what we know to be the electrical grid. Uh, whereas on the larger electrical grid, you have all of these stations that produce energy, and you have the transmission and distribution lines that get it to uh, the rest of the citizens. Uh, with a microgrid, you have you produce your own energy, uh, primarily right now using uh, photovoltaic solar panels. Uh, you can incorporate wind in there. You can do geothermal. You can uh, incorporate uh, hydroelectric power. So there are all types of things you can do to generate that power and also incorporate batteries to store that power locally. Uh, so when those other assets are not producing, you can always cycle your batteries in online, and that is uh, incorporated with an intelligent grid controller that keeps everything synchronized to the actual uh, grid and also uh, knows how to optimally dispatch those power-generating assets. I hope that wasn't too technical. No, that's great. Thank you. Just want a little clarification on that for our viewers. So what impact do you see microgrids having on our energy future? Well, I, I think it's really the future, uh, number one, because right now we have three particular grids in America. We have an East Coast grid, we have a West Coast grid, and then there's Texas all along. Um, so you have a really centralized model, right? Uh, so that means if there's a disruption on one part of that, it disrupts a lot of people. By having, by implementing microgrids, we can like decentralize that power, right? So people are producing power on their own. So if one person has a problem, you're kind of isolated and it doesn't affect the rest of the grid. Uh, and probably the most important aspect of it is you'll be producing these powers with uh, renewable assets that don't emit those greenhouse gases. Uh, I mean, it's really critical in us trying to fight the effects of climate change. You see here, I'm on the West Coast here in California. Every year we have tremendous uh, blazing forest fires every year. On the East Coast, you have rain, uh, mm -hmm. floods, right. massive storms all the time. So we can see the effects of climate change that are really having on on our nation as a whole and in our economy in general. Uh, so we want to be able to implement these technologies to kind of reduce that uh, those effects of climate change on us right now. That's great. Okay, now what effect will the upcoming election have on the adoption of renewable energy in our country, in your opinion? Well, now, you know, there is one party that we see that is really big on uh, fossil fuels, right? They're all, when they say energy, that's what they're talking about. Energy independence, fossil fuels. Uh, well, those fossil fuels are really uh, endangering us as a country. Uh, we, like I said, like we talked about before, we've got that, those dangerous effects of climate change. Uh, but you see with the Democratic Party, even with uh, President Biden, who just, they just put the Inflation Reduction Act, there were several measures in there uh, to implement technologies with renewable assets, right? So the Democratic Party right now is looking to 
uh, bring about our energy grid of the future where we have one party who's still stuck on those fossil fuels. They want oil, oil, oil. Let's drill, let's drill, baby, drill. That's what they want to do. And I think that's going to uh, be to the detriment of our future. So what role do you see veterans playing in the rollout of these new technologies? What can we do as, as veterans or, you know, what opportunities are going to be out there for veterans? Well, with that Inflation Reduction Act, there were a lot of provisions and a lot of money set aside to, um, to implement these technologies. And uh, as veterans, uh, we stand to gain a lot. There are a lot of training that's available for us, as in particular, to uh, gain these skills uh, because they're really going to need a workforce to roll out and implement these technologies in mass because they're looking at electrifying cars. All of our automo automobiles will be electrified here in the next 10 years or so. Uh, so it's going to take a lot of people to do that, and veterans are really positioned to do that because we have background fundamental training uh, already, and then they're making other training available to us. What qualities do you think veterans could bring to this that you see would be invaluable in this new type of you know, work opportunity? Like I say, as veterans, we are trained to be uh, accountable, number one. Uh, we're res you know, responsible people. Um, sure. we're, we've been trained to, you know, we get an objective, uh, you give us an assignment, mm -hmm. and we just go with it. So that's been one of the, the, the big assets that I think veterans can really bring to the table when it comes to this. That's great. So, so in your mind, what areas of the country are quickly moving to adapt these renewable energy technologies? Uh, well, here in California, where I am, um, there are a lot of not only federal credits, but there are a lot of state incentives uh, to uh, help people implement these technologies. Uh, so from the, there's a 30% investment tax credit uh, that you can get for implementing these technologies. Uh, also, within the state, there is what's called a self-generation incentive program that can uh, uh, provide additional funding. And the individual investor-owned utilities like SDG&E, TG&E, um, and SoCal Edison have uh, additional incentives. So, you know, effectively, you know, 60 to 70 percent of your project, depending on who you are and how you're implementing, could be, could be paid for. On the East Coast, uh, uh, states like New York, uh, Connecticut, uh, even in Chicago, uh, in, in the uh, Illinois area, they have what's called SREX, where you know, it's, it's a, another form of an incentive that's provided by the state, as well as these other incentives provided by the federal government. So we can see these, uh, you know, the West, Western states, uh, the Eastern states, uh, I would say in ERCOT, in, in the Texas area, uh, it, it, it th those are good areas because of the resilience that we can bring about, right? So you don't have to worry about losing your power. That's but great. The, this technology can be deployed anywhere, but we see where it's growing fastest is on the East Coast and on the West Coast. That's, that's a lot of incentives, right? People should be jumping at that. Absolutely. Don't you think? Absolutely. In addition to, and again, with that, in, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, mm -hmm. they even increased the amount of incentives wow. that are allowed for that. They're trying to really expedite uh, the adaption of this new uh, green economy effectively. I think everyone's seeing that, you know, something needs to change, right? We can't keep going the way we're going right now. Oh, I mean, we are on a one-way path to destruction, right? We are at the tipping point. Uh, we are just like the Titanic, and we see the iceberg. We're about to hit it, and we just keep going. Mm -hmm. Right, so we got to at least try to, you know, steer this thing. It's going to take a while before a big ship like that can turn again. So it's going to take a while. It's going to take us now aggressively uh, implementing these technologies to really have an effect. Because we're here at a crossroads. You know, if we don't do something here quickly, we're at, at a point where we may not be able to do anything to have to reverse the effect. Right. Yes. So, in your mind, how can veterans get access to the necessary training to take advantage? of these new green energy jobs, Rod? I know uh, on a previous conversation we had a few months ago, uh, we kind of spelled out a lot of really free training that's available to veterans. Wow. Uh, so I would suggest uh, going back, checking the website. I know on the website uh, we put a link up there to that. Um, so, you know, a 
quick Google search uh, on uh, renewable energy training for veterans can probably pull up about 10 different programs right in your local area. Uh, so you'd be surprised the amount of information and the amount of programs that are out there specifically tailored to, to veterans to really bring this technology about. That's great. And your website, which website should they check out? I know the American Heroes uh, site. We put some information okay. out there. On it. Great. I know in one of the news that I know in a couple of the newsletters uh, that went out as well. Awesome. Great. Again, Ameri America's Heroes Groups comes out with great resources, so uh, that's awesome. Absolutely. Now, what do you feel your mission is um, in your company? Like, what is your mission right now in developing this and trying well, we to like we like to consider ourselves as compassionate capitalists, right? Mm -hmm. So our, our, our goal is every company's uh, goal, if you're in business, is to make money. Mm -hmm. However, our, our goal is not to be greedy, right? Our, our key mission is to help people to implement these technologies. One, that can make their power more affordable. It can make their power more resilient because, you know, it, it, you don't have the tendency to go down as often as being on the grid and make it be more responsible by producing power through, through, through renewable assets and not producing this greenhouse gas. I mean, that's really our mission, is to help people implement that so they can save money, uh, they can make their operations more reliable, and they can help save the planet all at once. So it's a win-win-win situation. So that's really our mission, our goal as a company. That's great. Now you talked about a lot of incentives that are out there right now, you know, in various parts of the country. What are some barriers you've seen that have come up? And you think, oh, you know, if that wasn't there, we could have a better path to where we're going. I don't know. Maybe there aren't any barriers, but if there are, can you think of any of those in going forward? I with mean, this? I, I think even what we're experiencing right now here, um, one of the biggest things is dealing with the utility companies. Um, unfortunately, you're going to have to deal with them because you're going to have to get interconnect to them and that kind of stuff. And they can really stall the process. They can make it a lot more difficult than it has to be. So I can see that as being one of the major uh, factors that can cause in the slowdown of this technology being implemented. Uh, and then I think uh, after that is really education. You know, people really don't understand this technology. People don't understand what the demand charge is. People don't understand that they can have a system that effectively doesn't go down. Uh, they didn't even know that's, that's possible. You know, so we can even, it's, it's, it's about educating people more about what microgrids are and how they can be beneficial. So I think once people, once more people get to understand what that is, I mean, really it's a no brainer to, to implement that particular technology. It's going to save you money, uh, make you more resilient and help save the planet. Why would you not do it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now I know when I was in Holland, I saw a lot of windmills. So do you mm -hmm. think other countries are more conscious of, you know, green energy and just kind of saving, you know, you know, being more mm, sensitive, I guess, to our environment and what are we putting into it? I just know it just seemed like in Europe, it just seemed a little more like common to see types of, you know, different right. well, types of. Well, one of the things energy. that's a blessing and a curse for America is, you know, we were really one of the first to implement an electricity grid, right? So it's great, you know, all of our citizens got electricity, but by doing that, we implemented it with a lot of older technology and, um, you know, we are of the mindset, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> so to get us to change now, after we've had hundreds of years of this, you know, technology to deploy like it is, to get us to now all of a sudden say, okay, we're, we're going to get rid of fossil fuels, we're going to go to all this renewable sources of energy, a lot of people, it's going to, number one, it's going to disrupt a lot of people economically, right? There's a big industry built on selling fossil fuels. I mean, huge. They have a huge lobby and all of that. So that's going to disrupt that entire industry. Uh, so that's why you see it being slower to adapt. But you see other countries that didn't have the advantage of 100 plus years of having a grid already implemented. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the advantage of having all of this fossil fuel right under their under their land that they could just drill for and get out of the ground. So they had to come up with other ways. So because we had these resources available to us, which is a blessing, but it still is a curse now because we are so stuck in how we utilize them till we don't want to get off of them. So that, that's how I see that. Right. So if we keep going where we're going, where do you see this going? Like how do you see like five years from now, 10 years from now, what's going to happen if we don't change what we're doing? 
I mean, if we stay on our same track, I mean, we see it every year. We're seeing more uh, more frequent storms, and they're more intense. You know, they're dropping all kinds of, you know, just this past year, we saw storms that we never saw that kind of uh, water or wind with the storms. And they're only getting more intense because the sea is warming up that fuel these big storm systems. On the West Coast, you're seeing every year fires grow more massive. Our fire season is growing, you know, you know, it used to be about three months. Now it's about six months. You know, pretty soon it'll just be fire season all year. So... Uh, so we're really seeing the impact on our climate. I mean, and it's very tangible. So it's not like, oh, well, it may be happening. I mean, you can walk outside and see it with your very eyes. So I, and I think that's going to be so important for us to roll out these technologies and try to, to try to curb that. Do you think implementing this type of energy, too, would help our economy? It's, oh, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. Number one, it will make people have power that was much more resilient. So number one, you don't have to worry about your power going down as much. Two, you're not spending as much power, excuse me, you're not spending as much power, excuse me, as much money on your power now. So you have more money to, like we're working with uh, a, a lot of nonprofits, they have more money now to put towards their programs and causes. And if you're a business, you have more money put now back to your bottom line. So that makes you more sustainable. Right. So right. sustainability is really the key. Absolutely. And it makes you more sustainable. Absolutely. I know in some countries, I know in the East Coast, where I came from, um, you could pay $300 a month for electricity. It's very expensive. Oh, yeah, easily. Oh, California is even worse, right? In San Diego, here where I am located, I'm um, with uh, San Diego Gas and Electricity. We have the highest utility rates in all of the United States. Wow. The, enti the entire United States. So for us here in this market, it's really like shooting fish in a barrel because, I mean, whatever you can do to get off of those rates, and they have what's called time of use, where from, say, 7 o'clock a.m. to 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you're charged one rate. From 4 o'clock to 10 o'clock, you're charged a super high rate. And then from, like, 10 a.m. to from 10 p.m. to, like, 6.30 a.m., you're charged another rate. So when... You know, a lot of times if people just wow. implement solar instead of a true microgrid at four o'clock, you know, the sun is going down, particularly this time of year. We're just, we're just ready about to go back, you know, and it's going to start getting dark at four thirty, five o'clock. So your solar is not going to be producing at that time. Right. And now you're going into the highest utility rate. So now mm -hmm. people are coming home, they're washing clothes or feeding their families. It's four thirty. kids are on the computer. Everybody's mm -hmm. watching TV. You're pulling the most electricity at the highest rate, All right? So our rates at that time could be 36 cents per kilowatt hour. So when we implement a microgrid during that time, we can spin up our battery, let our battery take the load so you don't have to pull it from the grid, saving you all of that money that you're pulling from the grid at that time. So it's just a no-brainer to implement these things. Wow. We have about a minute left here, Rod. I just wanted to have you have any final thoughts you would like to share with our viewers about clean energy and, and, Brevian, and, and Brevian. Well, just, you know, this is the future. Um, everybody has to be dedicated to implementing these technologies really to save our planet. Right? You can go to our website, which is Brevian, which is B-R-E-V-I-A-N, energy.com to get more in, uh, information on what we do and how we do it. And really what our mission is, is to help save the planet. If we make a buck or two along the way, that's great. But we are really dedicated to help fighting the effect of climate change. And one of the ways to do that is to produce clean power. Thank you so much, Rod. Thank you to our partner, Rod Matthew, with Brevian Energy. Stay tuned with America's Heroes Group. We'll be right back.